Hello everyone and welcome to the clash a lot of you have been waiting for. It is round seven of this year's Prague Chess Festival Master section. Uh, Vincent Keimer uh, versus Nodirbek Abdusatar Vincent with uh, that Nizhmedinov like queen sacrifice uh, against um, uh, Vidit in the previous round uh, with a very nice victory even though it was, uh, you know, uh, uh, g give or take. But, you know, he 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 made the, the best out of the position that he had and he was able to take down Vidit. Uh, and Nodirbek coming off from a loss uh, to Pregnananda. But still... Uh, uh, in the lead of the tournament by, by half a point. Now let's see what happens in this one. Uh, it, it's a very exciting opening, very exciting game. I'm sure you guys will enjoy it. Let's check it out. Vincent uh, with the white pieces opens with d4. Uh, we have d5 by Nodrebek, c4, and now d captures on c4. Uh, the queen's gambit accepted, of course, you know that it's going to be a very sharp game. Uh, pawn to e4, and now uh, the, the top two moves here are e5 and knight to f6. But Nodrebek already deviates with knight to c3. Again, our good friend, uh, you know, Philidor uh, turning in his grave, uh, blocking the c pawn like this with the knight. Knight to f3, and bishop to g4, just uh, pinning the, uh, the, the knight here. We have pawn to d5, knight e5, and now knight knight to c3 inviting the capture on f3 but it doesn't really do anything for uh, black for example if knight captures g captures so look at this all of the squares are taken and the bishop has to go back to d7 or to c8 and i mean it doesn't look all that impressive white can just capture on c4 play bishop e, uh, bishop to e3 queen can come to b3 we can castle queen side and enjoy the uh, the mighty center so of course another big goes knight f6 we have bishop to e3 and pawn to a6 we have pawn to h3 chasing away the bishop and now uh, there are two games in the database where bishop captures on f3 was played interestingly one was won by black one by white but here another bit goes for knight captures on f3 and it is now already as of move eight that we have a completely new game so okay g captures on f3 you have to capture the knight your king is in check uh, bishop to h5 and now bishop captures on c4 and uh, here uh, you know if, if you had this position with black it'd be tricky to find a move here on how to develop you don't want to play g6 bishop g7 because that really puts your light square bishop in a uh, well, uh, a tricky situation, and you don't want to play a move like e6. e6 has the problem of just... Uh not being defended sufficiently uh, as the, the bishop and the, the pawn here guard the d6 square. So e6 is losing. So you have to play pawn to e5, the move Nodrebek played. And uh, this uh, prevents some tricky moves, like for example, queen to a4 with check. Now you don't have to play c6, now you can block with the knight, as if you played, the, for example, pawn on e6, and now the, the pawn uh, would be hanging. So instead, after e5, bishop, uh, after e5, we have bishop to e2, uh, just nicely guarding the f3 pawn, and bishop to d6. And okay, with a, with a few uh, well thought thought out moves, uh, Nodrebek uh, completed development. The, bishop, the dark square bishop maybe not the the most spectacular piece. It's basically a pawn for the moment, uh, but uh, you know. Uh, you, you can't have everything with black right right away. We have queen to b3, pressuring b7, pawn to b5. Uh, pawn to a4 by Vincent, and b captures an a4. Of course, Nodrebek uh, doesn't mind playing the uh, the awkward-looking move, uh, as it is the top move recommended by the engine. Queen captures with check, knight to d7, and now rook to g1, just putting pressure on g7. And it looks like maybe Vincent... Uh, uh, ruined his uh, king side and queen side a bit too much, uh, you know, if, if you value the safety of your king. Uh, but this is modern chess, anything goes. We have castles, uh, and now queen back to c2. Uh, pawn to a5 by Nodrebek, and now knight to b5. Putting pressure on the bishop, but not really with the idea of capturing it, as the for the moment it's a pawn. The idea as the bishop covers the a7 square is knight a7, and then shift the knight over to c6, where it will uh, definitely be a mighty steed. So queen to e7, and now knight to a7, just going for that c6 square, and you have to uh, be very careful, what will you do with the queen once the knight lands on c6? So Nodrebek says, alright, let's play a 5 free of the f7 square for our queen. Knight to c6, attacks the queen, queen f7, and pawn to h4 now, creating a, an outpost for the rook on g5. King to h8, getting the king off of the uh, off of the uh, uh, th this uh, file, but also uh, the light square uh, diagonal, if it opens up, could be a problem. So the king definitely belongs on h8. We have rook to g5, now putting pressure on the f5 pawn, uh, and here another we just place queen to e8. And uh, the question is, do you capture on f5 or or not? 
And now, interestingly, you should capture. And just to, to show you what happens if you go for something like f captures on e4, which is possible. Let's say f captures and you trade here. Bishop captures, queen captures, and now you kick away the rook. Uh, yes, that can be played. And now you start pushing with pawn to a4. But now we have queen to e8, like I've shown, uh, and king to d1. Now, this is a, a fairly weird move by Vincent, but uh, it, it, I, I guess he thought that it, the king would be safer there uh, from... Uh, Nordrebeck's pieces uh, uh, as uh, d1 is a light square, so maybe he, he, he was worried about keeping the king on e1. Uh, to tell you the truth, I have no idea why he played king to d1. Uh, it's, uh, you know, probably a move only a, a 2700 plus player can explain. Uh, but uh, also, yeah, you, if you want to capture uh, on, uh, on f5, you can definitely do that. And also, if you want, you can capture on a5, you can definitely do that. But uh, it seems that Nordrebeck uh, uh, was able to trick Vincent if he he allows it. Uh, maybe it's just not that good. Vincent played king to d1, and now Nordrebeck plays pawn to h6. Attacks the rook, and now again rook captures on f5 is the way to go, for example. Uh, but but even if you capture, then queen to g6 could be very annoying with the threat of queen g1, and it's just not easy to find moves. Uh, you, you're going to have to play something like king to c1 to, to meet queen g1, check with bishop to d1, and it looks very, very odd. So instead, uh, rook to g1 right away, and now uh, the move that, uh, well... Uh, it definitely gives Nordrebeck a, a, a spectacular position. I'm not just going to show it to you. Uh, I'm going to ask you to find it. It's not a. It's not a forcing move. It's not a move that uh, uh, you know does something uh, like I said by force. It's more more of a move that uh, limits what your opponent can do. So uh, the, could, could you could you you know uh, just seeing the position? Do you, do you know what the move is? Uh, you, know, you don't have to pause it, it's just a, a, a very nice move. So, well, you could play f captures on e4, and that, uh, and then play the move, uh, a4 is the move. But, you know, yeah, you, you, you have to find it. And now, what it does is that it prevents the rook from coming to a4. If you allow rook to a4 to, to have the rook help out with the defense of the fourth rank, uh, then it's not going to be as easy. But um, uh, here, after advancing this pawn to a4, uh, now white is really struggling to find the move. Of course, you can capture the pawn, but that's exactly what Nordrebeck wants, and only then will he capture here, and after a bishop captures on e2, the queen will not be defending, the king will have to capture, and then the king hunt begins. So that's the idea. Rook captures on a4 was played, rook captures, queen captures, and now f captures on e4. Uh, you could capture with the queen, but then the pawn structure is all messed up. Knight to f6 is coming. You're going to put pressure on the on the pawn and on the queen. Bishop to f7. You're going to win the the d5 pawn and uh, have a have a great position. So f captures on e4. Even objectively, it's the best move recommended by the engine. Bishop captures on e2 check. King captures and queen to h5 with check. We have king to d3 and now queen to f3. Uh, and, uh, well, now uh, white is still up a pawn, but uh, look at the safety of the white king and look at the safety of the black king. We have king to c2 and pinning. Now knight to f6, just putting pressure on the e4 pawn. And this means that uh, Nordrebeck will now win his pawn back. Uh, the problem is, okay, you're not going to play king to d3. You, you just played king to c2. But even if you did uh, like knight g4 and you resigned here, there's no, no defense here. You can't capture. Uh, you, you cannot um, defend the f2 pawn. And even if you tried rook f1, the knight captures on e3, captures and queen captures rook on f1. It's unplayable. So queen to c4 was played. Uh, you have to give up the pawn, knight captures on e4, and now uh, rook to f1. Here, Vincent uh, uh, still could have put up uh, some resistance, but uh, the, the next move that uh, Vincent should play to, to, you know, sort of hold the position uh, is very hard to find, and that is queen to d3. It just, uh, I mean, it doesn't... Uh, a hold hold uh, hold really uh with rook to f5 black is still winning but it does stop the immediate threat of knight captures on f2 because there's queen g6 threatening checkmate uh, and okay now you're gonna play queen to e2 check and it doesn't matter where the white king goes if you go to b1 or, or b3 because queen to d3 check will trade queens and even if you block with the bishop queen to e4 check uh, will trade queens and the black will have um a much much better if not a winning position but okay still it was uh you know if you want to fight this is the way to fight rook to f1 was played and now of course Nordrebeck is completely winning knight to f6 he goes after the d5 pawn uh rook to d1 defending and now knight to g4 uh going after the f2 pawn there's no defending it rook to e1 also you have to defend the the, the bishop here 
so uh, knight captures an f2, bishop captures and queen captures an f2 check, rook e2 and rook to f1, not allowing the rook to move, queen to e4, unpinning and now rook to f4, attacking the queen, queen to e3 or d3, doesn't really matter, queen to c rook to c4 with check, king to b3 and here rook captures on h4 and he was in this position on move 38 that uh, Vincent Keimer resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, the threat is of course the, the nice cure here with rook to h3 winning the white queen and if you try moving the king it doesn't really help like queen to f5 with check and uh, that's pretty much it. Now uh, you can play something like king d2 but then for example e4 you free up the bishop the, the rook is coming to h1 uh, there's no defense here you can play something like queen to d4 and also the d5 pawn is hanging so there's just uh, nothing if you if you do this then even pawn to e3 with check uh, will win the queen and if the queen moves back then bishop f4 wins the queen it's just not uh, possible to defend with uh, you know your uh, king uh, in an open board like this and with the black king very safe so Vincent did get his knight to, to the beautiful Beautiful c6 outpost is just that uh, look at the position the the c6 outpost is not really uh you know a key square for this game although it's a very nice square to have in many other games it's just a not very important one in this game so you know also think about that when uh you know maybe you sacrifice a pawn to create a beautiful outpost for your knight somewhere you know in your opponent's camp make sure that that's where your opponent's camp really is uh, so yeah, uh, very nicely done by uh, Noderbeck. He maintains his lead as he went into this round with a half point lead. Now he will uh, have at least that, if not more, depending on how the other games are played. And uh, I can just check the results of the other games if you guys are interested. Uh, don't uh, watch uh, the video uh, if you don't want me to spoil anything. Uh, but yeah, uh, Rapport uh, lost to, to Taiwan, uh, Tai, uh, <laughs> tai Van Nguyen. Uh, and Gukesh still playing against Prague uh, seems to be a very, very beautiful game. Uh, yeah, we've shown this one. And also uh, Vidit lo loses, I believe, his third game in a row to Parha Maksudlu. Yeah, and uh, it does appear to be a miniature, so probably the next game that we are showing. Uh, so yeah, very nicely done. And let me just quickly check on the live ratings. Uh, wh uh, where does this put Noderbeck? Uh, I don't know if uh, he was already attributed to the rating. Uh, but yeah, he's currently number five, again overtakes Alireza and is now, yeah, only one point uh, behind the world champion Ding Liren. So yeah, he's just, I mean, he's just crushing it. Incredible guy, uh, Noderbeck. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Chris uh, Karskadan, Don Chen, YouTube, uh, Tibor Kerekesh, uh, Kellen is the best girlfriend, uh, and BulletChestThriller.com for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.